parenting TikToks are actually horrible. So nowadays parenting has changed quite a bit because kids have been exposed to social media from such a young age. So honestly, it's kind of hard to guide your kids in the right direction because you don't really have any idea of what they're going to be influenced by because they go on the internet and it's pretty much a coin flip. Anyways, everybody is debating how to raise a kid properly nowadays. It's kind of become a TikTok trend where parents are saying, these are the ways we are raising our children. And turns out this stuff needs to be publicized because this is borderline child abuse. Okay, wow. We just saw a lot of those captions and we need to go through them one by one and uh, explore this demonic side of parenting. Okay, this one says he has his own iPad and screen time is not limited. Now, if you asked me the quickest, most efficient way to fry my kid's brain and destroy their future for all of eternity, I would say make them an iPad kid. Unlimited screen time. Are you kidding me? This is a recipe for disaster. I mean, obviously it, it kind of depends on what they're watching, but just looking at the toddler over here definitely looks like a child. So I assume you're putting them on some Coco Melon type shit. So 24 seven, 365 baby shark type of garbage. You're gonna go insane. That kid is literally gonna lose neurons if that's how it works, I don't know. And heaven forbid they try to watch the kids shows made nowadays, dude. That show will rot your brain so fast. You'll turn into Hassan Pike. Listen, the fact of the matter is kids do not understand self-control and just like delayed gratification or self-discipline. It's something that they have to learn from their parents that you don't just grab at the most pleasurable thing at the moment all day, every day, because you need to have some balance, right? You need to eat your veggies and then you can have dessert. Okay, second caption here. He eats what he likes. He's never forced to eat something he doesn't like. And if there's nothing that he likes, we go buy him something that he will eat. Oh my god, that is insanity. Dude, this is literally a recipe to turn into Nico Kato Avocado. You want your child to be like a big ball of balloon eating McDonald's every day? Literally becoming disabled on camera despite the fact that he's a multi-trillionaire? Like he's that addicted to the food and the social media clout? It's insanity. And the thing is, this is particularly brain dead because if you say he's never forced to eat something he doesn't like, all kids don't like veggies. No kids kid actually grew up being like, well, I'll actually have the broccoli over the ice cream. That kid needs to be slapped and bullied, okay? 99% of kids, all right? They're gonna choose the chocolate, the ice cream, the chips over any sort of vegetables all the time. Why? Because companies make these products specifically in a way that appeals to the human body. By specifically in a way, I mean by loading them with chemicals that uh, our brain likes or our body likes or sugar, salt, and fat. Sugar, salt, and fat are the three things that can make any human being go insane. That's our crack cocaine, essentially. These evil mega companies like Nestle literally spend like hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars trying to perfect their product in a way that gets you absolutely addicted. Don't get me started on my relationship with Nutella because I will go on a 15 minute rant. I am going to go on a 15 minute rant. Nothing is stopping me from, go I'm gonna do it. Okay, gather around the campfire kitties. I'm gonna tell you a little story of Pegasus and Nutella, the relationship that should have never been. It was my ex essentially. So growing up, I used to eat Nutella, the Nutella chocolate spread, right? I used to take a piece of white bread and slather some Nutella on it all the way, like two layers, okay? Probably four tablespoons of that shit and two breads every single day for my recess or lunch break at school. I don't blame my mom for this. She probably doesn't understand the negative effects and I was probably saying, mom, I want Nutella. Okay, I get it. But anyways, I had this every single day all the time. I know you're gonna call me absolutely cuckoo insane. I was. Sometimes I put sugar in the Nutella. Nutella, which already has like 20 grams of sugar. I know, I know, okay, I was insane. So I ate this every single day for, I don't know, 15 years. <laughs> it was ridiculous, which is probably why uh, I had a bit of a health problem and kind of died a couple years ago. But hey, I'm back. I cut out all sugar from my life and uh, now everything's nice and dandy. Exercise, eat well. Luckily, I figured this out in my 20s and not at like 30, 40 or whatever, which everyone seems to do because they all just get fat and they're just eating disgusting shit all the time. 
time, donuts, Pepsi, all that garbage. All I have is G Fuel. That's my biggest vice in my in, in the world right now. Anyways, the reason Nutella kind of destroyed me there is because sugar is really, really bad for your body. Sugar is so goddamn addictive to the human body and it causes inflammation. Not a lot of people know this, but inflammation is essentially the source of every single problem on the goddamn planet, okay? Autoimmune disease, that's essentially your uh, immune system attacking itself because of inflammation. Every single allergy, that's inflammation. You get hurt on your like arm or something, the bump or whatever, that's inflammation, okay? Everything is caused by inflammation. Sugar causes inflammation, therefore you should avoid sugar. Anyways, this is not a health video. We're here to make fun of stupid parents. He's allowed to try and have candy, juice, soda, etc. Okay, allowing your kid to try one of these things once in a while is totally fine. Now, another problem with all these uh, sugary treats and stuff, or, or salty snacks is the fact that it destroys your taste buds. I will continue my Nutella rant over here. Essentially, when I was having Nutella every day, the foods I had along with it, I used to eat a bunch of Cheetos, a bunch of chips packet every day. I used to eat a bunch of Kit Kats all the time. It wasn't really my fault. Oh, obviously, everything is your fault, but I, I mean, like as a child, it wasn't really my fault because when I tried to eat vegetables or fruits, they were so underwhelming. They tasted like trash. It was literally like eating leaves because it was so bad. Why? Because Nutella had 20 grams of sugar in it with each goddamn spread or whatever. It was like I was so used to that sweetness that everything else was garbage. But the fact of the matter is human beings, we have something called hedonic adaptation. I don't know if it kind of applies in this case, but essentially the concept is that we get used to absolutely everything. Okay, whatever our life scenario is, you're being tortured by somebody, you get used to it. You're a billionaire, you get used to it. Okay, in a couple months, you get used to it and this is your norm and you want some more. And the, the thing is, that's the same with sugar. So you want more and more and more and it's an endless and vicious cycle. But uh, what actually happened when I started finally started the gym like uh, last year or whatever. And I was like, okay, I need protein to tell probably not good for that. So then I switched to Skippy peanut butter. Apparently that 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 only has like three grams of sugar. So huge, huge step down from Nutella and slightly more protein. So pretty good. So I got used to Skippy as well. So I was like, okay, initially I tried it and I was like, this is disgusting. I can never uh, eat it ever. And then uh, I started eating that peanut butter. Then I got used to it literally in like two days. The, the first day, it was the most disgusting thing ever. Second day, I toughed through it. And then Nutella became inedible. Like I, if I have Nutella now, it, my body will go into a shock. It's so disgustingly sweet. I will vomit that shit out. Th and th then I realized, I looked online. I was like, oh, well, is Skippy healthy to eat every day? And apparently that that's also not good. So I got really deep into nutrition. I'm sorry for, I'm sorry about that, but this is really helpful stuff because I, I know a lot of you eat peanut butter every day and you're probably eating Skippy or Jif or something like that, especially if you're American or something. They have, uh, they have trans fats, okay? A small amount, but... Basically, peanut butter is not supposed to be that spreadable. You know, the oil is supposed to separate from the peanuts, okay? And they make it that way using this concoction of oils, like hydrogenated oils. There's like cottonseed, rapeseed, and soybean oil or something. Essentially, it has trans fats and is not good for you. So then I finally, very recently, like last month or something, I switched to natural peanut butter. You know what the ingredients of natural peanut butter are, guys? 100% peanuts. That's it. Okay, peanuts. Some people say even peanuts are bad for seed oils or some shit. I, I'm, I'm tired of that shit, okay? This is our, uh, as far as I'm willing to go. I'm not giving up my goddamn peanut butter, okay? I need to live. That is zero gram sugar. And again, when I skip, uh, switch from Skippy to natural peanut butter, I tasted it. It was disgusting. I was like, what is this bland shit? How do people eat this? And again, like magic, like an absolute bing, 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 bang, bong, magic right? Next day, Skippy became inedible, okay? Well, not as inedible. I can still eat it. It just became really sweet. I was like, eh, I don't want that shit, okay? And now I'm a natural peanut butter, which is probably the best type of peanut butter you can get. It, the only thing annoying is that the oil separates and you kind of got to take that out and it's like, eh. You got to stir, you got to store it upside down. A lot, bunch, of, bunch of whack job shit you got to do. Whenever you look for any sort of food you want to go for the natural type of stuff, just one ingredient, potatoes, that type of stuff, peanuts, that's your ingredients, nothing else, okay? Now, don't get me started on soda, okay? Now, I was never addicted to soda, luckily. Thankfully, I can keep my goddamn teeth. Soda has a sugar problem as well, but it's also not good for your gut and your teeth, okay? So the acid, soda is obviously acidic, okay? So it melts your goddamn teeth 
um, and basically destroys it. Now, of course, kids have milk teeth and they go away anyways. They drop off and turn into permanent teeth, right? New teeth grow in its place. But I'm fairly certain it still has some effects on it, maybe on the gums or something. I don't know. If um, any experts in the comments, please let me know. I'm really interested in this type of stuff. Fact of the matter is, when you start feeding yourself lots of... Uh, sugar, salt, and fat, your gut biome kind of gets used to it, right? So essentially when you eat a certain type of food, bacteria are created in your stomach, which kind of demand that same type of food again, right? So if you're having all this sugar, that's why people who eat a lot of sugar are just addicted. They want more and more. And it's not really them being addicted. It's the bacteria inside your stomach being addicted to it. So the, the bacteria are asking for it and you like a mind controlled parasitic zombie are uh, providing it to your little babies in there. So they're kind of mind controlling you. It's kind of messed up if you think about it. Okay, we co-sleep in contact nap. That part is probably fine. So co-sleeping essentially means that you're not putting them in that cradle or the toddler's little jail cell. You just let them sleep on your bed, which is obviously fine. And contact napping is touching your parents while you're sleeping, I think, which is like laying on daddy's tummy or hugging mom while sleeping, which is fine. That is actually needed for a toddler to grow up healthily as long as you're not doing it every single day until they're age 90. If you want something from the store, he will get it. Horrible idea. If the toddler goes to the store, they will find a million things that they want like Nerf guns or toy racing cars or dolls or chocolates or whatever. And if you give them everything they want, maybe your toddler hasn't been asking for this type of stuff. I find that very hard to believe. I hope you're not actually practicing what you're saying here because that would kind of drive you insane. And the fact is that when they grow up, they will realize that life is nothing like this, okay? You don't just get whatever you ask for, okay? It'll be a huge slap in the face. Okay, once again, going through these horrible captions, starting with this one, he doesn't have a strict bedtime routine. I think that's probably the worst thing you could possibly to do to your child, even more than the chocolates and the horrible types of food because sleep is super goddamn important. And the amount of adults I see now who have horrible sleep schedules, it's actually the majority now. Like every single person I talk to probably has uh, trouble sleeping, messed up sleep schedule, always tired all the time, some sort of ridiculous problem. That's probably the one thing I can really thank my parents for because, because I've probably stayed up past 1 a.m. maybe two times in my entire goddamn life. And you might call me boring. You might call me lame. Oh, he's never attended night parties or something. I think, I think, it, I think that's lame because you're not actually having fun that night. You're taking some hours from the next day. Fact of the matter is, there is no such thing as extending your day because extending your day means that you wake up later the next day and you're ruining your next day because um, you're messing up your sleep cycle and our body as human beings we function the best on a, a perfect routine you know sleeping eight hours a day roughly it can be six to ten depending on what type of human being you are your average should probably be eight hours a day and you should roughly sleep at the same time every day and wake up at the same time every day i don't like to put alarms so i sleep 30 or 40 minutes like more or less every single day i think it's worth it not waking up to an alarm because that shit immediately ruins my day. So, you know, the saddest thing when I talk to like some of my caller friends or just school friends in general, and they told me that they have like a messed up sleep schedule. The thing is they are literally operating their entire life on 50% capacity. You could be doing so much more amazing. You could be feeling so much more amazing. There's something about that, that drive, like after 10 p.m. that draws people to their phone or their uh, a TV show or a night out or something like that. And it just, messes with them and it ruins their day. And here's a fun fact. No good decision ever has ever been made past 10 p.m. I don't think any any human being on the planet ever. Yes, there are no exceptions. Yes, do not fact check this. Oh, your parents met at 11 p.m. Well, they're lying. OK, they probably met at 9.59 p.m. because Pegasus only speaks facts. OK, he will not be made to do something he does not want to do. What a horrible idea. Punch this kid in the face. Timmy, go apologize to him. He will not be made let loud to uh, do something he does not want to do. He's the king. He is our lovely toddler that we are going to spoil to the ends 
of humanity so that they will grow up an unbearable asshat. The thing is, toddlers have no set of realism in their lives. They might want to skip homework every day and play all day. I can almost guarantee you that this kid will grow up absolutely hating his parents for not setting any boundaries, okay? The kid might love you now, but they will hate you when, when they grow up. His feelings and boundaries are just as valid as ours. When he says no, it means no. What if he just refuses to eat all day every day? Just do you let him die? What if he shit his diaper and he said refuses to change it? Are you just going to let him suffer? Like, how do you interpret the goddamn wailing and crying? Like, I, I don't believe you actually follow this. And if you do, you are psychopathic and your kids need to be taken away from you immediately. I feel like this is an amazing way to dodge any and all responsibility while trying to appear as if you are the golden parents, the best parents ever, uh, ever. Like, you don't want any sort of backlash from your kids ever. And you feel like this would probably save them from like a, a rebellious phase because my parents gave me everything I wanted. Being harsh is part of being a parent. Like, if you don't want to do it, you should not have signed up being a parent. That is part of the job, okay? And I feel like the reason we have so many absolutely dastardly delusional mother flippers growing up thinking they own the world, just spoiled and entitled people, partly because of the parents refusing to set boundaries when they were children. And that is why our new generation is partly screwed if, if you're being raised by parents like these. It is literally your job as the adults, okay, to guide him. At the, I, I don't know, I feel like he's the, he's the man in the family at this point. Okay, moving on to another video here. So I think it's like from a Jimmy Fallon interview or something, but it's essentially just a bunch of neglectful parents who don't know anything about their kids. Like they don't know their kid's birthday. They don't know who their teacher's names or anything about them. It's really sad. Can you name your daughter's teacher? Mrs. Jones. Nope. Mrs. Moore. It's not Moore? Nope. That was my elementary school teacher. <laughs> can you name their teachers? Of course I cannot. What are your daughter's birthdays? Ah, uh, why do you do this to me? What about her? I give up. Any guesses? Yesterday. Oh yeah, yesterday! <laughs> Horrible. Her birthday was yesterday Just and you forgot yesterday. it. Yeah. Forgetting your kid's birthday is kind of bad. I know you're, you're a working man and you spend all day at work and oh, you have more important things to remember than your kid's birthday. But really, come on, it's your child. Probably pay attention to them a little bit. And it may not be important to you. Your birthday is probably insignificant to you at this point at age 60. Your kids will probably remember each birthday as a significant memory in their lives. You don't even have to get them something, bro. Just like remember it. I, f I feel like it's the thought that counts. At least you remembered something. If you get them something, that's that's even better but leaving it all up to mommy and letting her do everything is just bad dad behavior i feel like now i don't remember exactly but i stopped celebrating my birthday since maybe age seven or something i think i had like one party or something which i didn't really like and uh that kind of taught me that i don't like most people and having everybody at my birthday and me being the center of attention was damn cringe over here i'm fine because there's nobody really around me it, it, this is a youtube video okay none of you can pester me right now okay anyways despite the fact that me and my parents don't really like celebrate our birthdays that much. I mean, they, they sometimes go out to a restaurant to eat or something, but we still remember each other's birthdays because it's the thought that counts, you know? Now, as for the teacher thing, that one I find absolutely unacceptable. Did my dad know the name of every single one of my teachers to the T or something and all of their personalities? Probably not. But did he make an effort to? Like my mom 100% did. When I came home from school, she'd always ask me, you know, what did you learn in school? Okay, and then I would probably just elaborate all the time. I'll talk about my teachers and who is a good teacher, who is a bad teacher and all of that. And the thing is that your teachers literally spend all day with the kids, meaning that they are the ones shaping your kids' future and their personality. And if they're spending more time at school than they're spending at home, which is in terms of like memorable m memorable times, right? More at school, they're being shaped over there. So you best know what type of teachers are teaching your kids. I feel like you should definitely know their names, their personality, and just like what type of people they are in general, if they're literally gonna be molding your child. Now, controversial opinion here, but nowadays, Okay, I feel like if you got real smart parents, you should be a fan of the homeschool. Okay, I know you're keeping them away from social interaction, but I feel like the benefits outweigh the... I don't know, drawbacks 10 billion fold, especially if you really now to know how to homeschool your kids and give them a social experience and all of that. The amount of brain rot in school right now is ridiculous. It's training you to be an actual brain dead idiot. And if you completely avoid responsibility like this and just let absolute strangers shape your kids, and then you're shocked when they turn out absolutely ridiculous, 
is it's just dumb because you are coin flipping your own children. Probably when you were having your child, you you had a sort of vision of what you wanted them to become. Maybe you're 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 like, okay, I'm fine with whatever they 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 turn out to be, but you want them to have at least good values and stuff. And to ensure that, you you need to be involved in their lives. Okay, now this next part, they essentially just show the moms actually knowing everything about their kids, and I I find that pretty admirable. Can you name the best friend of each of your daughters? Uh, Mari Carmen Rojas, mm -hmm. Jimena Lopez, mm -hmm. Adamari Lopez, mm -hmm. Cristina Cornejo. Good. Uh, can you give us the name of their doctor? Fadi Torres. Good. Can you give us the name of their dentist? Uh, Games Dentalen. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your daughter's birthdays? Yes, uh, May 28, 2009, mm -hmm. August 8, 2013, February 24, 2006, June 8, 2006. Now, some people might say, like, obviously the moms know more about the kids because they spend all, all the time with them uh, if there's, like, if the dad is going out and working, but... But I feel like it's still no excuse to be completely disconnected from your family like that. But props to the moms, you know, you're at least being involved in your child's uh, upbringing. Obviously, this ain't all parents. Some dads may be better than moms and in being involved in their kids' lives. It's still pretty bad, just this clip. Anyways, any parents watching, please do not coin flip your kids with iPads, unlimited internet access, and influenced by anyone on the internet, particularly TikTok. That's probably the most uh, vigilant you have to be. I would say don't even let them go on TikTok. TikTok. YouTube is enough. It's enough entertainment. It'll probably rot your brain a little less. If you really want them to grow uh, grow up to be a super genius, obviously watch the Pegasus channel for facts and um, epic times, happiness and common sense. So they grow up and they're not bumbling idiots. Oh my God, everybody's a goddamn idiot. Anyways, let me know your experiences in the comments below. I'll be reading most of them here. I'm pretty interested in, in the topic of parenting. Follow my Instagram to send me topics as well. Maybe I'll I'll actually post something there. Click this video. You'll love it. You guys are amazing. I love you. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.